Hello again, everyone. It's Todd Sarooch, the horror nerd, here at the Horror Side Show Flea Market in Edison, New Jersey. We are having a great time today. Lots of awesome vendors, lots of great guests. Speaking of great guests, I have the privilege of standing here with one of the stars of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, Miss Jennifer Rubin. Jennifer, how are you? I'm really well. Hi, everybody. <laughs> you having a good time at the show today? Yeah, you're a fantastic guy. I like meeting oh, you. Oh, I like you already, and flattery will get you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jennifer, what has it been like for you to be part of one of the most iconic horror franchises of all time? It's been nothing short of a dream. <laughs> Warrior! I see what you did there. <laughs> Does it ever surprise you that after all this time, the fans are still coming out to line up to talk to you, get an autograph, take a photo? No, because I think with every generation, the film becomes larger and larger. Their children and their children and their children. And it's just an honor to be a part of the division between people being there, being live, and hands-on artists uh, and then there's a division and then it goes into CGI so it's more of the landmark and uh, just the old-fashioned way of doing things mm. Mm. I, I can certainly appreciate that um, what do you think what is it about the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise that you think has helped it endure all this time well, I think Chuck Russell and Frank Darabont uh, wrote a fantastic script. And I think Heather Langenkamp's movie, Never Sleep Again, showed the documentary of how to build a character, which is the character of Freddy, as opposed to Halloween documentary was about how to build a franchise. And without Robert England, Freddy Krueger does not exist. It's just a wig and a makeup and a, a some kind of nothing. Not that everybody who pretends to be Freddy is fantastic, but it's not the same as being the original. True. Very true. Um, I'm sure you have been asked the following question about a million times, and I'm sorry. Yes, I, yes. I, I'm boxers, not briefs. <laughs> How did you know that that's what I was going to say? That's what they all ask me. That is uncanny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But it, the, the inner horror fan in me is coming out. Um, what was it like working with Robert on set? Well, Robert was in makeup. And back in the old days, they would have the stunt coordinator on the film. And then they would dance you through the movements. And then uh, they would say, all right, we got it. Now, OK, let's, let's do action. And then um, because I was just a young kid and kind of overran with emotions and stuff like that. Uh, when he attacked me, I kind of felt like uh, I should stab him, which mm, I did stab him. But the thing is, is uh, he was taken care of by all the people on set and stuff like that. But, you know, you, you lose your head when you're a young kid and uh, just you shouldn't pick on me. I just kind of have to say you shouldn't do that and because I'll lose my head and maybe not be... Uh, I'm not Tom Cruise, you know, where I rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and then get it perfectly. It was more like thrown into the snake pit and then fight for your life. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. So there's something that I always like to ask when I interview people who are associated with horror films, because I'm always fascinated by the answer. Are you yourself a horror film fan? Sure. I like uh, Jodie Foster. She's the one, like, uh, I don't know exactly all the titles because I don't remember, but I remember liking when I was a kid The Other. I like Chrissy McNichol. Um, Heather, uh, no, wait, not Heather, uh, who did I just say her name was? Jodie Foster, Chrissy McNichol, um, 
I, I like also too like uh, the, the Exorcist. I thought was a comedy. I didn't think it was a horror film because I think just We're talk fight now. By the way, <laughs> well, I think just talking back to my mother was something I couldn't conceive of, <laughs> let alone like fair enough <laughs> <laughs> throwing up on her with pea green soup. So, I you know uh, my my parents are very um, polite. So. I just couldn't imagine acting that way, and I got a big kick out of it because I probably had some uh, hidden emotions towards my parents. Mm. Probably. Fair enough. It's it's some little insight there. Yeah, but I, I would I would say I, also Anthony Hopkins. You know, back in the day, Anthony Hopkins with that doll, that doll. Oh, magic. That, magic. Oh yeah. Like so, those are the kind of things that you would see back then. And you just go, oh, my Lord. But I, I never thought of them as horror films. I just saw films constantly, all the time. That's all we did as kids. All right, interesting. That that film is why today I can't. I do not like ventriloquist dummies. No, 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 no. <laughs> Kill it with fire, and that's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> that Anthony Hopkins thing, Magic, did screw me up, too. That yeah. did screw me up, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jennifer, switching gears a little bit. We were chatting uh, earlier, and you yourself am a filmmaker, and you're working on a documentary. Can we let's talk a little bit about that? Well, it, well, it seems if like you it's... you can, whatever yeah, you Yeah, I can talk us. about yeah. it, but I think it's going to be pretty boring for until you see it, because, you know, uh, it's a deconstruction construction site documentary, and uh, men build the world. They really do build the buildings, and they fix the cars and they uh, boss girls around <laughs> and they do all that kind of stuff but when I watch men work and the precision and the hard work and the concentration uh, I just thought I just thought a lot differently about men until I started uh, photographing them all day long because uh, there's just a lot to learn about them. They're kind of like animals, in a way. You know, like, I, I think of men like a moose. You know, like a moose, that's a moose is doing what a moose does. But the, you can't make, like, say say you're dating a moose and you, you want him to be a raccoon. Now, there's no change in him. So the thing is, is, like, men are really different from women. Really different. The hell you say. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it's true. Like, the thing is, is like, they're really different. Uh, you know, the, I respect them now more after photographing them because uh, they have a sense of concentration and, uh, you know, they measure things all the time. <laughs> That's what I notice when they're building things. They measure and they have blueprints. And if you have the blueprint and you have the measure, they're not winging it, kind of like girls are winging it. I kind of think girls kind of wing it. And then men are kind of like measuring and measuring twice and then measure again and then they kind of build things. You know what I mean? I think they're a little bit more thoughtful, but not in a, a better way than women, but just... Uh, it, it, it's probably pretty boring, but I think once I edit it together, you might appreciate uh, what men do more. Say a man's a moose, okay? So he's a moose, so there's a moose. And then like a woman's like a... I don't know, I mean I don't photograph women, but I would say like say, say a woman is a... a cartoon. <laughs> I was going to go with the unicorn. <laughs> yeah, but it's not like an animal. It's like they're really two different things. Mm. Really are. If I photographed women, I can't even imagine. I, I, I don't even want to. But I, I, I like, uh, I kind of like men more than I ever did before. <laughs> well, that's good to know. What kind of an animal am I? You're a moose. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it. Yeah, you're a moose. Moose are strong and yeah. big. Okay, I don't think yeah. I'm down with that, right? Yeah, and one day my, you're going to drop... My camera operator's making fun of me right back there Well, right you, you got to... Yeah, you know, it, you know what I mean. But, you know, I'm using it as an example. I know, I got you. Yeah. I got you. But you're a moose. Good. I, I, I'll take it. 
coming from you especially. Thank I'll take you. it. So um, as we wrap it up, Jennifer, what is the is the does the documentary have a name yet? How can the fans follow it along if they want to check it out? Uh, well, it'll change a lot, but I was thinking about calling it um, Magical Properties, and I also thought about calling it Pipe and Steel. And then I also thought about calling it um, Out My Window. Hmm. I like that one. Yeah, I, I think because I always have to zoom in and zoom out and then a pan, and it's always coming from Out My Window. Uh, yeah, but it depends. It depends. It, but I think it'll be interesting because it's a woman's... Like, these men don't know I'm photographing them at all. Ah, interesting. So, I've been filming them for uh, over a year now. And uh, they have no idea they're on camera. Huh. So, um, but they they all look like, to me, because I have, I'm, I'm really looking at the light and the way the light hits on their blueprint that they look, all look like John Wayne. They all look like, they all look like gorgeous, stunning men. They look so good. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll keep an eye out yeah. for that. I just pitched uh, Michael Levy from um, Terrifier 2, so he's going to read my honorable mention script that I just wrote, or finished. And, uh, yeah, you know, but I think, um, see, the thing is, is when I was uh, became an actor, it was because I used to have a really big nose. And uh, I was playing racquetball, and I smashed myself in the face with my own racket. And then my mom took me to, to the nose doctor, and they cut half of my wind vane nose off. And uh, then, they, then I became like a supermodel and an actress, but I didn't have the personality for it. And now that I'm older, I ha I'm that smart, funny kid again, and uh, the... Um, uh, I, I really am more of a photographer than I'm really somebody in front of the camera. But I appreciate that I have had the chance to do both, and I do feel that I'll have a long career because of the stuff that I just like cameras and photographing stuff. And I think the people that I photograph are overlooked, and I think some of the men that I do photograph are, are overlooked. And and a lot of the times when I try to interview those men, I would say, hey, what's going on here? No, nothing. Well, nothing, we don't know nothing, and we're not telling you nothing. And I was like, all right, we'll see about that. <laughs> so, you know, that's the thing is like after, you know, after the fact, men will go, oh, hey, <laughs> Good job, yeah. Now, now I see what you're talking about. You know, it'll be like that. So, like, whatever. It's just for fun, anyway. Sure. We're still alive. Nothing killed us yet. It, well, exactly. Here we are, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's real nice are. to meet you, too. You Likewise. Were just awesome this was fun. Man. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm just a fan at heart. No, but you're the man with the nicest cool camera stuff. and a real good light. Well, I, I try. Pretend to be professional. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's, it's all good. good. Anyway, Jennifer, thank you so much for a yeah, few minutes sure. of your time. I appreciate it. I wish you luck with the documentary. Yeah. The scripts you're working on and everything else in the future. I, I hope you uh, you are a good editor because I sure did ramble on a little bit. You, you'll see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you'll see. All right. I'll make it work. Well, thanks, Jennifer Rubin. Everybody here at the Horror Sideshow Flea Market in Edison, New Jersey. I'm the Horror Nerd signing off. We will see all of you in the next interview. And I will too. No, I won't. <laughs> see you later, alligators.